This is one of those rare instances where I can actually have you do a laboratory exercise at home just using a couple of simple pieces of equipment. What you're going to need is, first of all, a long inclined plane of some sort. Obviously, a long piece of wood works very well for that purpose. You can even be creative, for example, and use something, say, like an ironing board. You want to make sure, however, that the length of the object that you're using, in this case I'm using my board here, is rather long. I measured the length here earlier. The length of this board is 81 and a half centimeters. I'm going to refer to this as X. 81.5 centimeters. Let me go ahead and convert this into meters. This is 0.815 meters, like so. Okay. okay, and then I'm going to take an object. I'm going to use a paper clip like so. You're welcome to use any object that you wish, as long as it will slide down the incline and not roll in some manner. So pick something that will slide, such as this paper clip here. Okay, and then what I do is I time how long it takes for the paper clip to slide down this slope after starting from rest at the top. That is from here, say, down to the bottom like so. Now, of course, I'm using my phone to film this video, but I used my phone earlier to measure the time necessary for the paper clip to slide down the slope. I did this a couple of times, and I took an average value. The average value was about 0.9 seconds. So I'm going to set the time t equal to 0.9 seconds. Okay, now using a little bit of one-dimensional kinematics, we can actually go ahead and find the acceleration. So x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half at squared. Let's go ahead and substitute in our zeros. I'm going to say that the object starts at the origin and it starts from rest. So then therefore, x is equal to one half at squared. If I just cross multiply a little bit here, we can now solve for the acceleration. So to solve for the acceleration, let me get my eraser. So to solve for the acceleration, move the two up to here, move the t squared down to here, and the acceleration then therefore is equal to 2x over t squared. Let me go ahead and plug in the values here that I have, and let's see what the acceleration is equal to. So two times 0.815 meters, and then divided by 0.9 squared, and this comes out to be about two meters per second squared. Okay, so that's my measured acceleration here for the paper clip. Once again, when I start it here at the top of the board at rest, measure the time necessary for it to slide down the slope. Okay, now let's keep this number here in mind. Let me do some erasing here. And now let's refer to one of the kinetic friction examples that I did in lecture, specifically finding the acceleration when an object is initially moving down the incline with kinetic friction. I derived the following expression for the acceleration in that problem. The acceleration is g sine theta minus coefficient times g cosine theta. So I refer you to that specific problem. It was part A of the example involving the incline with friction. I derived the acceleration as this value. Okay, now we just measured the acceleration. G, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. The last thing that I have to do here in order to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the paper clip and the board is measure the angle. So I'm gonna do so by using this protractor here. Okay, I will photograph exactly what it is that I'm doing here such that you can see this a little bit more carefully. But when I use my protractor like so, I measure the angle of inclination here to be 21 degrees. Okay, so if I measure the angle of inclination to be 21 degrees, now I'm basically just gonna plug everything in here and solve for the coefficient. All right, so let's actually do the algebra here and solve for the coefficient. I'm gonna take these two terms here and reverse them. Like so. And now I'll divide by g cosine theta to the other side to then get the coefficient by itself. Like so. And now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers here that I have measured. Okay, so first of all, g sine theta, so uh, 9.8 times the sine of 21 degrees. Okay, minus then the acceleration of two meters per second squared. And then divided by quantity, 9.8 times the cosine of 21 degrees. And this then gives me a value to the coefficient of about 0.17, like so. So I outline, in for, I outline for you in the directions how I want you to do this at home. I want you to photograph your progress as you proceed, proceed through this laboratory exercise. 
and then just fill in the blank spaces on the mini lab handout for the data that you obtain. Okay.